Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Real Life Performance Testing in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 64 Player Ground War between these $2,000 gaming PCs featuring the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X 8 core 16 thread. 4.5 gigahertz max turbo and the Intel i7 9700KF 8 core 8 thread 4.9 gigahertz max turbo although we're running it at 5 gigahertz because it's Intel and that's what it does best. I have got real gameplay and a decent chunk of it to show you with MSI Afterburner real-time performance numbers on the screen so you can see CPU usage, RAM usage, VRAM usage, much more information than just a chart will give you and much more than just a 30 second clip inserted in a long video of a bunch of other tests will show you. This is dedicated to really showing you what Call of Duty Modern Warfare looks like on modern machines. Now this is the second in a ongoing video series between these two computers. Whether I do three or six or no more of these will somewhat depend upon you and your comments in the comment section below and how well these videos do. I can give this amount of attention only when I do these dedicated videos because if I did this in a long format, this thing would be an hour long and no one would watch it. In any case, I strongly encourage you to check out part one of this series which featured The Division 2 where I talked for a much more length of time. That's down in the video description below. So I'm not going to say anything else other than to put the two set of specs on the screen here so you can see what they are. If you want to go see the original build videos, those are linked down in the description below as well. But with no further ado, let's get to some benchmarking, shall we? Call of Duty Modern Warfare Ground War Multiplayer 64 player online large map. And yes, I already died on the left hand side of the screen. There will be many many deaths to celebrate throughout this battle. I found myself a tank on the right hand side. You know it's fun until you get shot and blown up which will also happen, spoiler alert, later in this benchmark. I would like to draw your attention to line three of the real-time performance numbers in the MSI Afterburner numbers on the top of the screen. Look at the very first number. That percentage is the total percent of the CPU being used. The Ryzen 7 3800X is an 8-core 16-thread CPU. So 50% is 8 threads, 25% is 4 threads, 75% is 12 threads, and 100% is 16 threads. The i7-9700KF on the right-hand side is an 8-core 8 8-thread 8 CPU. It does not have hyperthreading. So 50% usage over there is 4 threads, as opposed or 4 cores in this case, as opposed to 25% on the Ryzen 7 3800X. So at 100% usage there, we're only using 8 threads because we don't have hyperthreading. Watch the performance, and of course you're going to have to watch it at various points because this is not a built-in benchmark because it's live gameplay. The performance changes as we get to different parts of the battle. There's different things going on, but you'll start to see a theme as we play. And unfortunately, MSI Afterburner does not have the ability to just do a running average of those, which would actually be pretty cool. Hey, MSI, add that feature to a future version of Afterburner because that would be wicked awesome. The Ryzen 7 3800X is using, on average, 35-45% to 45 of the CPU. It's not using all 8 of the real cores, but it's using a decent chunk of them. It's definitely using at least 6 of them. The i7-9700KF is not hitting 100%, but it certainly is hitting 80% a reasonable amount of the time. Now, at 80% usage, there is a little bit left in that CPU to do a little bit of work. Background tasks, an update, run an audio program, listen to music, etc., but not a ton. I would remind you that this is a completely clean test bench. There is nothing running on this machine except for the launcher, the game, and MS Afterburner. The video is being recorded externally on a hardware capture card on a second computer. This machine doesn't even know it's being recorded. This is a completely fresh install of Windows on each machine where everything is in pristine condition. I've, even uh, Microsoft's OneDrive and the Windows Defender icon in the task tray are turned off. Everything is turned off to make this as clean as possible. Raise your hand in the audience if your computer is really that clean when you play games. 
Okay, a couple of you may have raised your hands, and fair enough. Some of you are really, really uh, diligent about cleaning everything out, shutting everything down, and running a clean machine. And in that case, maybe the configuration shown here is what you're running. I suspect that's not the case for most people. Most people are probably running 5, 10, 15 things in their task tray. A web browser's opening, they're listening to music, they're watching a YouTube video on a second monitor, they're engaged in audio chat, they're, they're doing something besides just playing the game. What percentage of users do that, I don't know. I know I do that. I play very few games without having something going on a second monitor. All of that is going to use up some level of performance. And this right here is a good example of how you can sort of spin this narrative either direction. I could sit here and say, number one, see, you don't need hyper-threading, you don't need 16 threads. Look at this, we have great performance from an 8-core, eight 8-thread, eight i7-9700K CPU. No problems whatsoever, plenty of performance, it's not using more than 8 cores. This 64-player online multiplayer game, wonderful! What's with this nonsense 16-thread stuff? Or I could say, see, it's nearly using that entire CPU. There is nothing left in reserve. That thing is nearly maxed out. And when games come out in a year or two after the new consoles launch, it's simply not going to cut it. And you won't be able to live stream. You won't be able to do other tasks in the background. You need 16 threads, or at least 12. A six core, eight th uh, six core 12 thread would be a nice compromise. And actually, I personally would take a six core 12 thread over an eight core Eight thread, but that's a separate conversation. So whether or not what you're seeing on the screen is an issue deeply depends upon how you want to spin this particular story. I am of the opinion that given the fact that these CPUs are effectively the same price, why would you buy the Intel? Well, because it's faster. It's five gigahertz, right? It is faster sometimes in some situations, but not by much. And there's no upgrade potential on the i7-9700. Yes, you can put an i9-9900K, but the next CPU launching the 10th generation will be on LGA-1200, new motherboard, not compatible. There will be no future CPUs to install. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. On the other hand, if you get a Ryzen 7 3800X or 3700X, I know many of you are going to say, what about the 3700? That's fine. Get a 3700X. I just had a 3800X in this build. So get a Ryzen 7, and if you want to go to a 12 or a 16 core CPU in two or three years, you will be able to, which you will not be able to do on the Intel system. As far as system RAM goes, I'd like to point you out that on this completely clean test configuration where nothing is installed and running besides the game and the launcher and MS Afterburner, we are using nearly 13 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, 16 gigs is enough technically, sort of, except there's no room for swap and Windows and disk. You know, disk cache is another issue. That You know, the Windows disk cache, which is keeping stuff from your drive buffered into memory as different textures and world units load, that's not accounted for in that memory number. I firmly believe that if you're going to an 8-core anything, it should have 32 gigs of RAM. It's not that expensive, so 32 gigs is where it's at. As far as VRAM, well, this game just uses basically all the VRAM that you've got. You can see up there the 8 gigs of VRAM is almost completely used on the AMD card and not quite almost completely used on the NVIDIA card. NVIDIA does have better texture compression and better memory management than AMD does, so they make more effective use of their VRAM. Unlike my previous test with the RX 5700 XT, you'll notice that the usage and the clock speeds there are no issue whatsoever because we were playing at 1440p high detail and the bugs that exist at 1080p on the RX 5700 XT don't exist here. So that's why we're using that card again because we're at 1440p and that addresses the issue. In terms of performance, well, they're really, really close. I'm going to show you the chart in just a second. But the differences between these two CPUs are almost rounding errors. They're not. The Intel is, on average, in most situations, a bit faster, but not by enough that I think it really matters, and certainly not by enough to overweigh the advantages of the AM4 socket and the hyper-threading on AMD for effectively the same price. If Intel offered hyper-threading, 8-core, 16 threads at this price point, it'd be a completely different conversation, but they don't, so it isn't, and so this is what you've got. 120 frames per second average on the Ryzen 7 3800X versus 115 frames per second on the i7-9700KF. 
These are effectively the same performance when it comes to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yes, I know the video cards are different, and I'm sure somebody in the chat in the comment section below is going to scream and yell about the video card difference. Hush. These things are so close, it doesn't really make a difference. They are plus or minus 5% apart from each other. This is what the builds were done with, and this is what I'm testing them with. And if nothing else, it demonstrates the fact that the video cards are, in fact, almost identical in terms of performance. 81 and 84 on the 1% low, and 8 and 11, that's because of the deaths and response on the 0.1% low. So you can discard the 0.1% low, because if you go back and watch the footage, those happened on death and respawn and not on the game, so they're fine. So we are dealing with wonderful performance on either system. Well, that was a whole bunch of same results between the two. If you just looked at the benchmark chart, you might think they're basically the same. What's the big deal? Well, they are and they're not. As I showed you, the CPU usage is dramatically different between the two because hyperthreading? No hyperthreading. If you do want to go the Intel route, no problem. Buy an i9-9900K, get 8 core, 16 threads, and problem solved. Of course, that's about $100 to $150 more than the i7, whereas Ryzen exists. And of course, Ryzen has an upgrade path, which Intel frankly does not. Now, later this year in 2020, Intel will be coming out with the 10th generation of CPUs, and the rumors are that the entire lineup from the i3 to the i9 will all be hyper-threaded. So four cores, eight threads on the i3, six cores, 12 threads on the i5, eight cores, 16 threads on the i7, and the new i9s will be 10 cores and 20 threads. Boy, that's gonna be high power consumption at the 14 plus plus nanometer, whereas you can have eight core 16 threads for about 350-ish dollars today on Ryzen. But if you do wanna go that route, you can either wait or you can buy the i9 and be done with it. If for whatever reason you really wanna go with Intel and you just absolutely can't push the budget to an i9, I would lower the video card to get the i9. I, frankly, this is here because this was a sponsored build and that's why it was included. I wouldn't buy an i7-9700K at this point. At eight cores, eight threads, that just makes no sense spend the money on the i9 or buy Ryzen. Yes, it works. And as you saw in this video, you could point to this and say, see, wonderful, great, no problem, everything's wonderful. Yeah, I guess, but that's a lot of money to spend on something with not a whole lot of future. Buy the i9 and step up to it, wait for the next generation or go with Ryzen. One of those would be a much better option than buying this. In any case, if you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Be sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell notification icon to be notified when future videos come out. Please consider hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. We have a new $2 per month support option right here on YouTube. It gets you Discord access to our private chat channels. It gets you the Tech Deals emoji, loyalty badge, and everything else for just $2 per month. For $5 a month, you get access to our exclusive videos. There's over 50 of those and counting. You have the option of those right down there on that join button. We greatly appreciate your support. Of course, your comments in the comment section below and various other things, as always, in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.